This week on Lucky Fish, we check out some very cool low cost multi hulls, find and repair a few problems with our rig, raise the foremast by hand, we go. Oh, Ooh, easy. and get reminded why boat work can be one of life's greatest pleasures. We totally landed on our feet when Wayne put us in a space right next to Brandon's Warham Tungaroa. Brandon had a fully equipped wood shop under Element and generously made the use of his tools available to us. Without this amazing stroke of good fortune, we would not have completed even half the work in these next videos. Girls are going over to Brandon and Danielle's boat to have a boat tour. Element's coming up really nice. What's more, Bryce from Sarasota loaned us this car. This was typical of the generosity Floridians extended to us. And Captain Jerry from Tampa. Hello, my name is Jerry. I'm Zaya. And we're trying to show you some basic flies that we could tie, finding materials around the boat that you could use for trolling off your sailboat. Who we first met at the Hui spent his annual leave on Lucky Fish on three occasions working on special projects. We are going to make one, possibly two videos showing you these projects which made such a difference to our cruising season. Nice and slow. Just doing a little bit of maintenance on the aluminium masts. There's a little bit of corrosion that's crept in in places. Probably a bit of electrolysis causing this sort of thing, a bit of bubbling come up. Haven't really got an explanation for this one. This is actually only in contact with wood, but you can see the corrosion's got in the back there. And we've got just the tool to clean it up. With the uh, multi tool, you can, borrowing Brandon's multi tool, which looks to be a must on every boat. Okay, it does uh, it does cutting into a blind side like that with a saw blade with a, something like that just fits on there and you can enter a piece of timber like that or a crack you may need to open up to try and get some epoxy in that sort of thing it vibrates from side to side or you can use it as a sander cool. it's like a glorified dremel looks like my size of sanding yeah Buy it in the link below. <laughs> what are you working on? Just cleaning the paintwork from the base of the masts and what it's happened? just little cracks that are opening up in the glue joints and places. It's only minor, a little bit in here. But uh, you Tiny just don't want the crack. water creeping in there. It's a very st structurally important part of the boat. And we'll try and keep it good. So I'll just put another couple of coats of resin and paint them again after filling the cracks with some uh, epoxy glue. So this is Jeff of Mojo Rigging. And have I got the name of your business right? Uh, yeah, Mojo Marine. Mojo Marine. St. Augustine. Just replacing the wire strap that holds the head stay to the mast with some uh, spectra here. Wire had some cracks at the, th the thimble. So you cut a few strands off just to thin down that tail, yeah? Uh, yeah, just to taper it a bit yeah. uh, to get it uh, through. So I'll, I'll taper this a bit as well. Mm -hmm. This splice is, you know, locked on itself. So it's uh, kind of extra, extra mm -hmm. secure. Mm -hmm. So right now, even before it's tucked all the way through, it can't, yeah, can't sure. come out. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just probably try to get check the length here. So my idea was to go around one mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And then, and then over, uh -huh. I think we'll sure. get the best, and we were at about six inches, uh, I think, to the shackle pin. It's interesting you can cut that with scissors, like when you think Kevlar carbon fibre, you know, you need, like, um, Right, yeah, like well this metal, is... Metal the, working shears. Yeah, know, the, yeah, the Dyneema is a different uh, airmid than, you know, the Kevlar is quite a bit tougher to cut. Mm -hmm. um, carbon's not not too much different than this, but uh -huh. uh, right. some of the heat set stuff, uh, like the Dynex, yes. is uh, 
the same fiber but a different uh, you know manufacturing process yes so that's a bit bit harder to cut I think this will be about twice as strong as that which is probably what um, six seven millimeter flexi stainless yeah that's I think six six millimeter quarter inch and uh, yep, yeah yep. that's probably like in the neighborhood of six thousand pounds five six thousand pounds and this is probably uh, at least nine or ten thousand when it's when it's new and if this were Dynex the same diameter the Dynex yeah. is probably uh, fifteen thousand in, mm. in this size mm. so yeah you know if I were to re you know rig one of the you know a, a new worm I would probably use all Dynex right yeah. probably uh, like nine mil Dynex and then you know for a further you still have to go with wire but um, yes. I, I would have used you know, one by nineteen, not this uh, seven by seven or seven by nineteen stuff that this is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which actually works a bit better in the further too because it's a rounder. Yeah. It, the the outside of it ends up being rounder, so it just runs a bit smoother. Anyone rigging a worm? It sounds like nine mil Dynex is the way to go. It's much easier on the hands as well. Um, yeah, in fact, the, the, the Tiki Thirty, which you know mm. does just have the single mass, but this mm. is actually what he used on the, the Tiki Thirty was a uh, quarter inch. And here was the Tiki 30 in question. Clay and Partners home built whippersnapper. Yeah, this is, this is, that was, that was way okay. cool. No, same. no, I'm not ready. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Yeah. So this is your Tiki 30, eh? You got a gas tank in the corner down there. Yeah. This is kind of something we kind of came up with was the engine cover. Like the plans don't have this, this? the table or no, the engine cover. Never can. Or these seats really. They have like nets. Oh. I don't know. So they have nets in the room. Yeah, well Warren sort of gives you the and... basic canvas and then yeah. you then you try and make it so you can actually use it. Yeah, <laughs> right. So what is this? 16 feet across? Or 14? Uh, I think I got a 16. Yeah, I mean it's, yeah, it's I'm we, we built I, I, it. I, I, yeah. I really like the 30s. I think they're and the 26s and the 21s. <laughs> Any of those tiki's could give you more adventure than you could wish for. The next time we saw Whippersnapper was six months later, a thousand miles away in Guatemala. Back to the spectra splicing. Fortunately, there are many instructional videos out there already. As Bruce Matlack wandered by. All right, yeah. well, Bruce, keep me posted on your, uh, you know, getting out of here and yeah, all of everything. You are, and, uh, are you still trying to maybe get to the Bahamas by Christmas? Or Bruce is well known to many, being the first world windsurfing champion, competitive wind rider racer today. All right, we're on. Yeah. Woohoo! Stay on. Don't let it break on my back. <laughs> yeah, I'm going right. Yeah. And new owner of Jim Brown's famous Sea Runner 31 trimaran, Scrimshaw. She'd taken a hit in Hurricane Irma coming off her stands. Most of her <laughs> repair work was completed when we arrived, but we gave him a hand to get her sailing again. You guys look like surgeons. <laughs> Two surgeons. <laughs> The next time we saw Bruce and Scrimshaw was in Georgetown, Bahamas. Back at Lucky Fish, Jeff had finished the four-stay bridle and left me with some instructions to protect it before we could raise the foremast. See how the quality of the job really dropped off as soon as the camera started? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't see it from this distance. Wait until I get a close-up. Jeff, the rigger said uh, wrap it in tape. We had some silver tape and he said put the black tape, the insulation tape over the top. It's really uh, just to protect it from UV. There's still supposedly about another two inches of stretch left in this spectra, so it should just pull through the tape, no problems. Mm -hmm. 
and we'll take up the slack as the uh, rig settles in on the lashings on the side stays. Good. That'll be plenty, I'd say. So this is the foremast, just to run through some of the gear on it. There's a wind indicator which just clears the VHF antenna. Nav lights, uh, the uh, wind instruments, and they're taken down through just some cable ties through the hole into the mast here and then all internal and out and exit hole at the base. This is uh, the aft side of the mast so this is the peak halyard and the throat halyard for the foresail. Similar setup to the main mast with the hounds arrangement. Spinnaker halyard and uh, this is a spare four stay uh, in spectra. And we just, uh, it was over, so over length, so we cut a bit off the end of it and replaced the bridle around the, the top of the forestay where it rests on the hounds here. It's all been taped up. So the rigger thinks this is good for, well, minimum three years, possibly a lot longer. But we'll just keep an eye on it. Forestay down to the jib furler. This is the jib halyard exit block. That's about it on the mast. All the shackles have been seized, the split rings have been interwoven with, with stainless wire. And aside from that, the mast looks and the, and the stay, the standing rigging look like they're in pretty good condition. At this moment, the mast raising posse arrived. Curtis, Jerry, Chris, Tim, and Lou dropped whatever they were doing to join in the fun. We covered how we lowered the masts and raised the main mast in the two previous episodes. Is it Jerry? Huh? Did it go smooth? Yeah. <laughs> well, still, this is part one. <laughs> Front stage. Do we need to connect that? Or? That's all we need to loosen? Well, I reckon we're ready to go. You okay? Ready? I'm just going to help guide it on the way up, but that's all I was thinking about doing. Yeah. Have a look at the uh, foot of the mast there, it should be like nicely it's, engaged. Yeah. Yeah, it's there. Uh, Jerry needs to put a little bit tension on. More on the side? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh it's stuck. Four stay. There yeah, we go. Oh, Ooh, easy. Second one, third one, fourth one. Finger. Again, like Flynn. 
Chris can oh, breathe yeah. a little. We can all breathe a little easier. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Hang on, Chris just lost his value. Angle's <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, now what you can do is probably uh, just leave it there as a safety because um, you're actually bananaing the mask back in the middle, you know? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the end of it. So yeah. it's, it's, it's stopping it from falling forward until so we I get the Now you want stage time. Yeah. You, yeah. Working on our boat in this great community of sailors, all helping each other, was truly one of our favourite experiences. Thank you to everyone at the hard stand and we're looking forward to sharing more boat work with you in coming videos. Well everyone if you found this video useful then please give it a like and subscribe and thank you for watching and a special thanks to our patrons for helping make these videos possible.